you very much, David, for your address here today. It was uh, greatly appreciated. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for the chairman's address. We have heard in recent times our membership has fallen within certain areas of our province, with other areas benefiting from a slight increase in numbers. Our own county's membership has remained reasonably constant over the last number of years, and hopefully that trend will continue. There have been many suggestions as to why this is happening, and I'm sure the debate will continue for some time. However, our resolve to maintain, defend, support and protect Protestantism will not waver. Our cause is just, and we should never be tempted to compromise on our faith. We portray in our banners what the Orange Institution stands for, and in this county, within the last two months, three new banners were dedicated. I congratulate Balahi LOL 400, Eden 2028, and Artie Clave LOL 1017, and we wish them God's richest blessings in the years ahead with their new banners, two of which we have seen proudly carried through Kilray today. We as an institution must do all that we can to look after each other, pray for and encourage each other as we have promised to. We must stop criticising each other in the media. It is demoralising when you read such letters and articles in newspapers and it does nothing to advance our great institution, it only causes division. We spend thousands of pounds to build and run the orange halls, to conduct our business, and this is where all matters should be discussed and remain. Let us not destroy from within what our enemies have never been able to do. As you're all no doubt aware by now, the Grand Master was interviewed by Brian Gray for the newsletter, published on Friday the 3rd of July 2009. The interview covered a number of topics such as parading, membership numbers and attacks in Norwich Halls. I have read the interview and watched the 12 minute video on the newsletter's website. The question which has caught everyone's attention was, do you ever foresee the day when members of the Orange Institution will meet Sinn Féin? To which the Grand Master replied, and I quote, well as I said at one stage, I never say never, because we have seen how politics have worked in the past. This is not the first time the Grand Master stated there may come a time when Grand Lodge may have to speak to Sinn Féin. He first said it in his annual report in Ballantra Orange Hall on the 10th of December 2008 and he explained to Grand Lodge the reasons how it may come to pass. Since now Sinn Féin are sitting in the government and also chair departmental committees, to understand what the Grand Master meant by his response, I never say never. Most of us here today can remember Prime Minister Major in 1993 stating in a response to a question, and I quote, If the implication of his remarks is that we should sit down and talk with Mr Adams and the provisional IRA, I can only say that would turn my stomach, and those of most honourable members, we will not do it. I will not talk to people who murder indiscriminately. Our own unionist politicians told us they would never sit in government until the IRA completely decommissioned and the IRA Army Council was disbanded. Did you feel betrayed and let down when you realised the truth? That John Major was talking to the IRA and that our unionist politicians went into government with Sinn Féin? Why then does the Grand Master's truthful approach to answering this question cause so much anger? Would we as an institution prefer that he would deceive us? Surely that would be contrary to our Christian belief and all that this institution stands for. And I assure you the Grand Master is not going to talk to Sinn Féin without consulting with this institution first. This institution has never met Sinn Féin and the Grand Master himself said, I don't think we'll ever convince that ilk to anything that is Orangeism or Protestantism. Therefore, the likelihood of any such meeting taking place is extremely remote. The 
this institution is a charitable organisation. Many law launches fundraise for various charities and churches. This year the Grand Master's appeal is for Northern Ireland Kidney Research and I would ask if we support this appeal. Through our church services and donations we contribute to the Lord on a Skill and Memorial Orange Orphan Society and I would like to thank everyone for their continued support. I would ask that we pray for all those involved in these works and that we as an institution give them all the support and encouragement they need. Governments pass laws which are contrary to God's holy word and we are told we must accept them. But government forgets one very fundamental thing. We will not be judged by them, but we will be judged by God. Therefore, we must as orange men and women read and study the Bible and pray on a daily basis. By doing this, we will give God his rightful place within our lives. We must take our stand for the reformed faith, like the Protestant martyrs, Ridley and Latimer, and never compromise or be ashamed of our faith, culture and heritage, which has been hard fought for and for which so many people have died. I would at this time especially like to thank Kilraid No. 5 District for inviting me here today and for working so hard to make this day so successful. I would thank the County Grand Officers for their continued support to our County Grand Lodge. To each member and to all who are gathered here today that you may know God's blessing. I bring you the fraternal greetings of County Londay Grand Orange Lodge, Coleraine District No. 2 private lodge, Black Sons of Ulster, LOL 256. Just before I finish, I will leave you with this portion of scripture, which Brother David Scott and I must have been reading at the same time. However, I don't think it will do any harm to repeat it. It's from, as Brother Scott said, Romans chapter 8, verse 31 and 32. In view of all this, what can we say? If God is for us, who can be against us? Certainly not God, who did not even keep back his own son, but offered him for us all. He gave us his son, will he not also freely give us all things? Thank you very much, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen.